Hey friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always so thrilled to have you. So today I have some tips and techniques of how to keep your neck, back, shoulders, hips, knees, feet, everything, your whole body nice and happy from head to toe while you work ergonomically in your studio. Now this is so important. I can't even tell you because if you're anything like me, I spend countless hours here at my easel as well as on my computer editing and doing administrative work and answering emails and all those kinds of things. And if you don't take care of yourself, I know if I don't take care of myself, I get so stiff and crinkly and I can't turn my head and my hips get so tight, my lower back winds up having problems. I'm telling you, you need to make sure that you're setting yourself up for physical success while you're in the studio because preventative maintenance is so much better than restorative. So don't wait until your wrists are hurting or your neck is sore or you're all crunched up before you decide, hey, maybe I need to get a neck brace or a thing or a crutch or a Ada pill or whatever. Now, if your doctor tells you to do any of those things, of course, you listen to your doctor before a little bird, of course. However, if you can prevent having to use wrist bands and neck things and of course taking any kinds of pills we just want to stay away from that we want to just feel good naturally and smartly and safely so without further ado i hope you are excited to learn just a few techniques now there might be one or two things like a really good ergonomic mouse or maybe a desk chair that you decide to purchase which honestly I have never regretted spending a little extra money making sure that my back and neck is healthy and safe in the studio. So hopefully you learned a little something today. If you do, please hit that subscribe button. It really goes a long way for helping me grow my channel and it makes sure that you come back for all the good artsy tips. I've got this lovely, lovely MC lady on the easel and she's going to be coming out in a whole video of her own soon. So stick around for that and enjoy the show today. Thanks guys. Now there are two major factors that you want to think about when sitting at your desk. For one, your posture. You want to be nice, straight, up and down, sitting squarely on your hips, on the backs of your thighs, like your under butt area. You do not want to be sitting on the back of your hips, slouched, curved. This is no good. You don't want that. You want to sit on the back of your thighs and you want to be nice, upright, right up and down. I choose to use a chair with no back, that way I am never tempted to slouch or sit. I don't have armrests, I'm never slouching. The only way I can sit in this chair is straight up and down, and I love it. It winds up being incredibly comfortable. When you sit correctly, time just kind of floats by. It doesn't get sore, like my back doesn't get sore. Number two is you want to make sure that your elbow it stays at a nice 90 degree angle. Now this is going to make sure that everything is lined up as evenly as possible. You do not want your computer to be too high because then what happens is you've got too much flex in your wrist. This is flex, this is extension, and either one of those for too long is going to be bad for your wrist. So if your computer is too high, you're going to have too much flex, you're going to have too much of an angle here. If your computer is too low, if you're too high on it, then what happens is you have too much extension. Your hand does not need to be going out at this angle. This is really bad for your wrist. So you want to sit at a way that it is a 90 degree angle and your wrist can come out forward. Now, um, as far as a mouse goes, um, on your computer, of course, most of us, we have the little, the little keypad. This is not great because your hand is being forced at an angle and of course you're having to press the button while using tension so it winds up really straining your wrist. I've also had a little mouse, this is called an ergonomic mouse, but something happens when you put your mouse over into the side. For one, this puts your arm at away from your body. So instead of having it lined up where it likes to sit, you are now using your muscles and tension to, to push your arm where it is. So it's not a natural sitting position. Not to mention the fact that usually what happens is your wrist winds up becoming flexed. <laughs> no. Extended, there we go. <laughs> um, your hand winds up becoming extended because I'm out there, look at this angle. It's far away from my body. It seems like it's okay because it's called an ergonomic mouse. Oh, look, it fits in your hand. But trust me, this is what gives you problems. Even if it was up high, it's still far away. I'm still having to use tendons to push my hand away the whole time. What you actually want is an ergonomic mouse that fits your hand 
in the position that your hand naturally sits. Now if you notice your hand, if you put it on the table in front of you, this is not a natural way for your hand to sit. It does not go flat, it does not extend out. Your hand will naturally kind of sit at a curve towards you facing your body. So to have a mouse that fits exactly how my hand naturally sits on the table is ideal. It gives me no stress. I can move around. I've got the clickers right up here. I love this mouse. Now the reason I put it here in front instead of over to the side is the same reason. I want my hand to be in the most natural position, the least tension. I'm not sitting here, I'm not trying to work out, right? I'm not trying to lift weights here. We want things to be lined up correctly because a lot of times you're at a desk, you might not move. Now, of course, you can get up and stretch, but you might not really move around for a few hours. So this is the most natural position for my body. And let me tell you guys, since I switched up and got this mouse, I think it was like earlier this year, it has made a huge difference. I was having some wrist issues and you can probably see in some of my old videos, I'll have a little tie around my wrist and it has been incredible. Now, just in case I'm ever doing a lot of major typing, I have one of these little foam things I can throw down on my keyboard, but these are not great to get used to because really you should be hovering while typing. You should not really be leaning. Now, I know that in an ideal world we're not, but like I said, if I'm on the computer sometimes for hours and hours, then I might pull this out just to make sure. But the point is, is that you want to be right angle here and as straight as possible. And honestly, while I'm typing, I should move it in a little bit like this. So I actually will, especially if I'm doing long things, move it in a little bit, try to keep that angle well. Now I'm gonna show you my amazing ergonomic chair. So check out this chair, it is amazing. It's actually set up so that my knees, the front of my knees, not the top, but the front of my knees and the bottom of my thighs take all of the pressure. It is so good, it's so comfortable, it looks really strange, but oh my gosh, it's almost impossible to get a backache or to slouch in this chair. I love it so much. I highly recommend you can get a chair like this for about 50 bucks online. And yeah, this is the greatest thing that's happened to my workspace. Now the best way to make art in an ergonomic and healthy way is by actually standing up. Now I know I'm probably going to hear a few groans from people that say, no, but I sit there and I draw and I paint for hours and I have to be able to sit or else I just get too tired. And that's okay. Some people decide to draw or paint sitting. That's fine. I'm not here to, to be the easel police. But if you really, really want to know, in, in this artist's humble opinion, standing up is the way to do it. Now I have focused on my posture for many years. I don't really have to anymore because I focused on it before. but. You want to make sure you have your shoulders back nice. You're standing upright. You're at a good position, a good solid lock position. If you start paying attention to your posture and make and just do the work, be aware, eventually one day you're gonna start standing upright and it's gonna feel so much better. And I can stand here for hours and hours and hours and hours and not get sore at all just because I'm holding my body correctly. So first you wanna have nice, good posture, standing well, squared up. You want to have whatever you're working on at about eye level. So whichever piece of your painting or drawing, you want it to be around about eye level. Now this does two things. The first one is it's good for your neck. If what you're working on is eye level, then guess what? Your eyes are gonna be right where your hands are. Your head sitting correctly is gonna be facing the way it already needs to. If you're way down low, guess what happens to your neck? If you're way up high, guess what happens to your neck? Now are either of these things good ways to hold your head and neck for long periods of time? Uh -uh. Okay, so eye level is gonna be good for your neck. It's also going to be much better for your arm and wrist. Now, you don't wanna have it really high because what happens is that your hand has to be very flexed in order to reach up there. If you have it very low, then your hand is going to be very extended. You don't want that wrist to be bent. Ideally, your wrist is very straight. You're holding whatever your material is and it's right at eye level. So this right here is perfect for when I was working on her face. Now, of course, as I paint, I tend to move my easel up. So as I move towards her body, this whole thing is gonna move up and I'm gonna stand at this position. I am not going to start painting like this to continue working on her, okay? Does that make sense? And on the other side of the easel, this is where I put my reference. So this is where I will have my laptop open. So again, as I'm standing, I'm looking pretty much at eye level. It's not way up high, it's not way down low. 
my head is only having to turn this direction, not this direction. Now my paints down here, they could stand to be a little bit higher, but honestly it's okay because as I'm standing here painting, you can see what my hand does. My wrist stays stuck. Now I'm not down here mixing, I'm not going like this, but it does work out for me. I'm able to mix and move like that. Again, if this was raised a little bit higher, it wouldn't be the worst thing ever, but I've got it set up to where I'm not straining my wrist. And that's the number one thing. You want to do preventative care. And of course, under my feet, I make sure to have a nice, very soft rug. Now, this is very key. There's a lot of people out there that say, oh, we were born barefoot. It's natural to be barefoot. Guess what? It was naturally barefoot when we were running around on grassy plains. It is not good for your feet to be standing on hardwood or concrete or tile all day long. This is actually a bamboo floor that I have in here, so it's softer than regular hardwood, but I still make sure to have this nice, very soft carpet because that way you have padding and protection for your joints and knees and everything. It's very, very important. I also really like to use a standing desk, especially when I'm gonna be working for long periods of time. I find that standing is very, very comfortable. So I have this, which if you know me, you know I ground scored this little puppy. I set this right up on my table, bring my laptop over here. I've got my little wooden thing and look, standing right up, keeping my posture nice and neat. Got my nice right degree angle. My, my hand is just where it should be. This, I tell you, I can stand and work for hours. I do this here. I also go down to my local coffee shop, the one where I barista a few mornings a week, and I go there in the afternoons, and they have a little standing desk area in the back, and it is so good. And when I go there, I make sure I have really nice, soft, squishy padded shoes. That way my feet and knees are protected while I'm at the coffee shop. This can make a huge difference for your back, neck, and posture. I just wind up not really getting sore if I work like this. If I pay attention and preemptively stand correctly, it's just not a problem. Now I know we've been talking neck and back and shoulders and all that all day, but don't think about those two beautiful pearly white eyeballs you got. Yes, we want to keep those happy and protected, right? What we need to do is we need to keep our screens down. I keep my screens down as low as possible throughout the day. It's different depending on what the light is outside, but I always keep my screens as low light as possible, as well as wearing sunglasses like religiously. I was blessed with 2020 vision. And I'm trying to keep it that way as long as possible. So I always wear sunglasses, even when I'm out on the water. Yes, I'm the dorky one with the little foam like croaky things. Yeah, that's me, that's what I do. But when I'm at home using my screens, look at how bright this is. It does not need to be that bright. You can cut it down quite a bit, depending on time of day, but especially in the evenings, those screens should be dim, y'all, dim. Our eyeballs were not meant to have bright lights like shining in them all night, like, or all day, I should say. Our eyebrows and eyelashes, part of the reason why we have those things is to help shade our eyes from light. It is not natural to have light coming from down below or in front and shining in your eyes. It's just not good. So I keep my screens as low as possible depending on the time of day, both on my laptop as well as on my phone. I keep mine at about 30%. Look how much brighter my screen gets. It is not necessary. I mean, you don't want it to be pitch black because then you're, of course, gonna be straining. But yeah, keeping it pretty dim, like, that's perfectly good. I can see everything I need to see on that. You know what I mean? So keep those screens dim, y'all. It's gonna make a big difference in the longevity of your eyesight. And last but not least, you guys, make sure you stretch. That is right. Every single day, you should be doing some stretches. I mostly focus on my hip flexors, which helps my lower back stay nice and loose and my hamstrings not get too tight, but you also wanna focus on your shoulders and back as well. This is gonna make a huge difference in preventative care. And real quick before we go, I just wanted to show you my favorite stretching for the tendons in my arm. Put your arm upright against a straight wall and you can pull your fingers towards you. You're gonna get a nice stretch in the back of your hand. Now take your body and put it perpendicular to the wall and then turn your face the other direction. You have no idea what a deep stretch this does all the way up the tendons in your arm. It is incredible. I do this stretch probably twice a day, especially when I'm on my computer a lot. And I might hold it a little bit longer than in this video, but I'm telling you this stretch will change your world. Make sure you stretch that all the way over. Woo, it's so good. 
Alrighty, folks, I hope you learned a little something today. If you did, think about hitting that subscribe button and make sure you check down below for links to all of the resources and products I talk about today.